Yeah, <laughs> smiling, everything's good then. Um, yeah, so Alex and I have been talking a little bit about, um, about open water swimming since that is kind of the, the only option um, available in this moment, hopefully not right. forever, but um, you know, you're, you're fortunate to live uh, in a place where there's multiple, multiple options for, for open water swimming. Um, and I know that some of you are thinking about it or are, and some of you have been doing it regularly. Um, we're not really gonna go into the safety part here today. Right. Um, if you want to talk about that, um, some of that is, um, you can, you can ask me, I've sent out the guidelines already, but also I'm happy to talk to you. It's more probably something that I would talk to your parents about given right now is that we're not having, we haven't gotten to the point of having organized anything because we just, just got out of the stay at home order. Um, if we get to that, that'll be a whole nother, a whole different thing today. We're going to mostly talk about um, kind of what you can do when you're in the, in the pool or sorry, in the open water that will, can help translate to the pool and some ideas. Um, Alex is, has been doing a little bit of um, leg work on that. So I'll kind of let him talk and then we'll go from there. Hi. Right. Yeah, thanks, Emily. Uh, the, I think uh, even though it's, it's uh, kind of a disadvantage for us not to be in the water, but the good, the good thing that can be uh, uh, really learned from this and, and actually uh, perhaps even it's possible to even gain competitive advantage is by uh, doing things on your own in, a, in the water environment, but very different environment that uh, you would be in the pool. You, you can really uh, be, be creative and actually uh, practice skills that uh, you will need uh, when we get back in the pool in a normal architecture, you know, 25 yard by uh, you know, 25 meter or 50 meter. But in open water, I know the environment is very different. There are no walls, there are no pace clocks. There are obviously no coaches on deck that walking up and down and and interrupting you at, at will, right? Just to give you an idea. But if you really distill to, to what's available to you, you have a lot of things available to you and that you already know a lot of things, what you can do and, and, and if you can, can apply it creatively, uh, you can really uh, get ahead. So Emily and I were talking about the possible kind of creating some framework uh, and in which you can uh, really put the focus into, kind of pay attention to the things that probably are the most helpful for the moment. And, and thus it will kind of propel you forward. In fact, in, in not even, not held back, not try to get out of the hole, perhaps maybe even get ahead of the game. So what the framework, what, I, what I'm thinking uh, is like, kind of like, a, I don't know if you've worked with Legos. Uh, so if you look at the practice, like uh, do, different Lego pieces, and we'll talk about each piece, say they're going to be five pieces in the Lego. And, and, and you can use those pieces uh, and kind of create the framework of uh, practice for yourself. So I think a, a couple of things you, you, you can do. And um, and the, the first le Lego piece, which I think is really, really important, is what, what are you paying attention to when you're in war? You, you're probably going to be in the wetsuit. You, you're probably not going to see a whole lot. There are no lines on, on, on the bottom. Visibility is not, is not very good. But take it into your advantage. Pay attention to what's happening inside your body. Pay attention to what are you really doing uh, and what's the effect of what you're doing and what kind of effect you anticipate. Think of a, a, a kind of three post-its, like, like square post-its that you're put on, on the screen of your computer in front of you. Uh, the, the first, like the, the left most piece like of, of post-it is what really already happened 
uh, let's say you're in the water, you did the stroke, uh, you're, you're extended, you're streamlining, what, what happened? Then in the middle, the middle post, it's what is happening now, right? And the, the, the rightmost post it is what is going to happen. Now, when we are in the pool in a very uh, familiar environment, most of you are in that center posted, right? It's what's happening now, what's happening now. Uh, some, of, some of you more advanced in, in terms of awareness, really always paying attention to what just happened as well. So you're, you did the stroke you're, you're, uh, and uh, you're, um, you feel you've gone far enough, you feel you, you're high in the water, you feel some of you would, would feel even how fast the water travels down your body. We, which is really really good thing, and uh, but some some of you who are the most advanced in terms of awareness, uh, even feeling what what is going to happen in like when you're swimming, what's going and you're shaping uh, your your body, your you work on the pressure, you work on the tone, you work on the body position to create that like immediate future. Like this is really advanced stuff to be in the front uh, posted. But even for you to think about it and being aware of what's going on and uh, in absence, all the stressors, all the noise, your, your, your teammates around you, crowded lane lines, et cetera, none of it is there. So this is a perfect opportunity to do that. I hope it makes sense. So mo most of us, again, are in the middle of what's happening now, but let's expand this framework and, and be aware of what just happened, what the effect of what you've done. And also once you're increased that awareness, kind of shaping the, what's going to happen in a stroke. You can use um, all kinds of different combinations. You can use, since there are no defined length, you, you can limit to six strokes, eight strokes, depending on the length, even three strokes are, are fine. Uh, in practice, transitions like uh, and start the, the simplest one. You go long axis stroke, freestyle, and backstroke. These are the, the easiest. The way it would look, you would do like six strokes of free, and and transition into a backstroke. Now the key is to take three strokes, last strokes of freestyle, and begin to shape your body into the posture of a backstroke. You know the posture of freestyle is more of a fighter is when you're really open, open chest, kind of shoulders back a little bit and the shape of a backstroker is rounded shoulders. It's like when you, when you fighter and when you're in trouble, like talking to your parents in trouble, you kind of get a little kind of rounded back. So you can change the, the shape of the body. And this is a very, very valuable skill. Um, and you can continue on like six strokes, six strokes, six strokes, and then you will do a turn. There is no wall, which you know we practiced it in the pool. So like no wall to turn. So do do rotation. You can do 180. You can do 360 if you want to. Um, and uh, paying attention to staying tucked in the water uh, and uh, and always finishing that in in a really good line. The line that you would uh, be re restarting your swimming. Yes, there is no wall, but all the skill sets are present. Now, there's an advantage to it also that typ typically, especially the long course, you you would have an opportunity to practice skill uh, on average between 30 seconds and maybe 50 seconds once. Now, here's an opportunity for you practice <laughs> every six, every eight strokes. Uh, and, and practice the skill, practice the turn, rotation, um, shape shift, all this, all these components are really in, in essence, this Lego pieces of your, of your performance, right? And here you can really maximize uh, you, your time to do this. Now combinations are really endless. You, you can go from long axis strokes to short axis strokes and kind of starting say from backstroke into breaststroke. Here's your middle, part of individual medley, right? So you can focus on, on the shape of a, of a backstroke rotation, the half turn and pull out, et cetera, et cetera, three strokes, breaststroke, 
focusing on the stroke, like le length of a stroke. Again, what's happening, what happened, what what needs to happen, and you can do this kind of combinations, for like for five minutes of one transition, another five minutes, another transition, five minutes transition. Again, the thing is, what you will find that it's it's very taxing because it's so dense with all kinds of things that, that's going on. And if you add on top of it, your, your uh, increased awareness of what's going on, you'll be, you'll, you'll be pretty bushed in about 45 minutes, just especially early on, you'll feel like you're, you really need to kind of lean, lean back, do some sculling and look at the sky. <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty taxing stuff. But the combinations, uh, you know, um, you know, endless. Uh, thinking about uh, also what you can do. This is just a skill set, and once you kind of improved on on the skill, you feel like it feel it, you know, it's kind of ha happening more or less naturally. You can add uh, some intensity uh, to the process, and what what I would recommend is. Uh, is to also get creative with that. Typically, when when we talk about intensity, most of most of the athletes would think, okay, that's rate. Increase the rate, tempo, and um, it will it will lead to to greater speed, which is you know partially true. But I would encourage you to to look into other things other than rhythm for now, especially. Look uh, at changing pressure and on the water. Look at changing the length of the, of, of the stroke, changing uh, posture, changing tone in a body, um, anticipating what what you want to do uh, to happen, and kind of shape in a way shape your stroke for performance. Other than rate, other than rate. So find the way. Again, it's a perception. It's a feel. That uh, you, you're pretty good swimmers. You you know when it's fast, and you know this. So think about the combination of let's say eight strokes um, free transition into eight strokes backstroke. So you you start say first four or five strokes at, at the normal rate. Last three or four strokes, you you try to elevate the speed. Really create a lot of speed, not the tempo, but but the speed. And transition into the next stroke like a little breather and and bout of speed again you can keep expanding these pieces uh as you get more you know comfortable and and well and well versed and be really ultimately as creative as you want to be and uh yeah but i think the key the key point is uh to be aware uh, re really to pay attention and uh, pay attention to the right stuff and and the right stuff again. It's it's your posture. It's your it's your, it's your body position. Um, how you're stroking. What what's the effect of what you're doing? Um, you can do um, a contrast skill. Co contrast kind of start maybe these eight strokes and start uh, with with exaggerating you know pretty pretty bad stroke. Basically like sloppy. Kind of splashing, see what's going on, and then more and more kind of bring it to like your, your very very best stroke and feel what the difference, and then kind of try try to reduce that kind of dramatic change, go from semi sloppy stroke to really refined, and then maybe just a normal normal stroke to refined stroke and, and try to feel the the difference. And I think the key is to keep um, expanding the awareness of, of drama, right? So anybody can feel from sloppy stroke to good stroke the difference, right? Because they, it's really ugly. This is this feels pretty good, but it's it, you know the the god is in the detail. And here, when you can see a good stroke and really exceptional stroke, and you can feel the dramatic difference. Of, of what you're doing then you really got something great going in this kind of situation and I, and i think it's like uh again like, like we talked the detail like my wife can uh you know ask me to do something like to put uh like like a range hood and it's a, it's a big heavy piece 
and I, I measured it, everything, everything looks level. She looks at it, she says, it's off. I think, no, no way, I just had the level. So I took the small level, looks good, took the big level, what do you know? It's a little bit off. So this is 164 of an inch difference in level and she could see it. Now I didn't see it, I need the tool. She doesn't need a tool. So what I'm saying is she's clearly trained her eye to see that kind of difference. And I think it's really possible for us swimmers to feel the difference. And I believe that the good athletes from my experience is, uh, is, is not that they're necessarily like physical specimens. I think they're, they're, they're bandwidth of what they're feeling and is so, is so wide. So, and, they, and, and their arsenal of skill is also pretty exceptional. So, so they pick the right movement, the right shape, the right tool to create speed that's that's to me i think this is what what a biggest difference outside of physiology and and other things it's it's, it's a skill set that they have they're they're really really perceptive they they feel a lot of nuance and i think this is an opportunity for us for you kind of do it in your kind of in a way in your own um kind of maybe digging a little bit deeper into what you already know and you've heard from Emily and, and you've heard from me and, and other coaches and really put it to work for you. I also send Emily a couple of scenarios, uh, different options, but this is, again, this is just a Lego pieces, one, two, three, four, five, and you can kind of look and, and, and really build uh, some of you a little bit more advanced, some of you maybe just thinking Alex is really going off, off the deep end with this stuff, but, but really, it really not. You know, this is uh, those guys that swim for me. Uh, know Jace knows uh, quite a bit of that stuff. So, uh, and uh, this is maybe just an opportunity to really advance it and take it to a whole new level. So, and I'm thinking that's an opportunity. Um, and that's the and, and I see that since everybody in the same boat and um, really in the same kind of situation. I don't see a competitive advantage is just doing, going back and forth because just open water by itself, uh, s swimming like a lot of laps with pretty pretty terrible technique with the eye sighting every third stroke is not going to be translating extremely well into performance in the pool. It, it will translate into general fitness, yes, but it, it's not going to give you a competitive uh, angle, competitive edge, which um, I, I believe lies a great deal on the technical side of, in the in execution side of uh, skill. That's, uh, so that, that's the thought, general thought that that's an opportunity to do this. Because again, unless everybody's going to start swimming 10K on a regular basis, 10K is a race. I mean, not 10K is a practice, 10K is a race. Then uh, we can kind of go traditional way. This is obviously, uh, uh, it, it's, it's not going to you know, happen. But, uh, but I think using the time, uh, you know, creatively, if you will, um, with uh, with with some unique individual um, approach to to skill development and 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 and, and continue refining it, 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 it's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, I I, I was thinking, um, you know, not that we're not not constantly obsessed with time because obviously we're a sport that's yeah. that's measured on time yes. um you know but this is since there is no you know even if you're wearing a gps watch those are usually a little bit off and you're stopping and all those yeah um you know i think the one of the advantages now is that there is no there is no time pressure so you right know, and you can really focus on on one thing and not be like well, well i'm not going to make the interval or you right. know right be third in my lane and normally I'm, I'm first. Um, exactly. You know. Exactly. All those, all the stressors, all this in a way there are the stressors or, or the feedback uh, points that we give to ourselves as athletes or, or coaches given athletes that they're not there. And I think 
if uh, if all of a sudden we would all go blind, right? For for example, hypothetically, I think we would develop really a, a, a heightened uh, senses and hearing would be really uh, really really good. We would we would hear everything and would be would be able to navigate without seeing. And in a way, what we have now is we. We deprived ourselves of of, uh, of some sense of us that we typically have, and I think this is an opportunity to really develop uh, the skill. Exactly, not paying attention is who who's first in the lane, who's last, uh, uh, but really going uh, and develop that what otherwise would be suppressed, would simply not be not not be there, and I think just paying attention. Uh, to this sort of things will really help awareness, will help develop that awareness. And, uh, and I think as an as a, as athlete, I think as, as a, even remembering myself as an athlete, when, when I started to pay attention to more important things that to things that I thought were, were interesting, develops better skills. The same thing as a coach. If you're, if you pay attention to the right stuff, you seem to, Making fewer um, errors in, uh, in in judgment and and seem seem to give a better solution to an athlete and be more effective. So I think it, it's really it's a part of a process. Really paying attention to to stuff that that really matters, and 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 right now that matters. Yeah, and I mean I think it's you know. I can I can speak from my own um, experience. You know, like when I go swim open water, it like is purely fitness, so I don't have to worry about um, any anything else. But uh, you know, I had a I got I had the opportunity to have a long um, conversation with Catherine, which I told you about. Um, yeah. And um, you know, she was she was talking about how even even the kids that are doing. 10 Ks in the Olympics, which of course are the people that she's coaching. Um, they're still doing, they're still doing a lot of this stuff, shorter stuff, you know, thinking about body position and, and balance. And certainly, you know, with a wetsuit, it's a little bit different. Um, because you get great balance. <laughs> great, great buoyancy. Yeah. Get, great buoyancy. Um, <laughs> and you know, like your, your, your strokes might be a little bit different, but it does give you, you know, an opportunity to just be, a little bit more thoughtful on what you're doing, um, you know, because there's so many factors which are affecting, you know, your speed. The, there could be a, a current, or the water is exceptionally cold or hot, or you know, it's windy. Um, right. You know, so it does wavy, right? Yeah, and so it does cause you to have to be a little bit more. I'm, I'm going to say athletic for your for your swimming, but um, you know, than you would in a a pretty controllable environment like the pool where like your biggest annoyance is that, you know, someone swam down the middle and splash water in your mouth. Um, so I think that that's very you know, true. <laughs> which of course everyone's had and it's terrible, but um, you know, I think that, that there are, obviously there is the fitness benefit, which, you know, I know that everyone feels a little bit um, anxious about that side, the, the swimming fitness piece um but you know i think if you were if you would were to think of if we got back in the pool tomorrow we wouldn't just do 60 minutes of swimming for fitness exactly you know? right. so um i think it's it's a good reminder um right and, and if anything i think uh using that opportunity if there's opportunity to go to open water and pay, paying attention to these things you're when you hit uh your normal environment in the pool, you get in the pool, you you can't help it, but you'll pay attention to these things. Your these things will 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 be on the forefront uh, of of your focus. I know I, I think Emily and I were talking that I when I go to swim, uh, it feels like I'm 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 so much more aware now than I even when I was a, as an athlete because I'm coaching it every day. Again, it's focusing my attention in the right stuff. I'm not any faster. It's in fact a lot slower, but it doesn't matter. I've, I'm aware. I feel 
I feel uh, more than I even used to. So I think that that's a that's a kind of a side benefit of that. I think uh, there is a, there's definitely no 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 downside to that um, idea. At least I don't see any. Yeah. Do you have any um, like tips for people? You know, like I'm trying to think of the word, but I'm a little bit zoomed out today. Um, you know, about uh, how they can focus on, you know, having proper, you know, freestyle position. You're talking about the fighter and the um, backstroke position. That's you know, true. are there, yeah, are there things, because there is probably not a coach or it's their parents right. or they're, you know, far enough away that you can't, you know, Catherine was saying how one of the big advantages is the kids just swim for a little while and then you can regroup after a fairly lengthy duration where the kids have a lot of good feedback Mm -hmm. after their swim whereas you know in the pool sometimes we coaches get get caught up with wanting to comment a lot right um so are, do you have any tips for the kids when they're swimming like pointers to think about that might might trigger good body position or you know things that they should be aware of well I definitely um definitely you know be just just awareness before going into practice i would have like a mental like maybe like a mental picture of what what you want uh, to see and happen and then when you're in the moment again you evaluate keep going and the first it notes i'm swimming what's happening how am i feeling am i swimming uphill am i swimming downhill right if you're swimming downhill clearly you're putting a little bit more pressure on, on your chest and the and the legs float, floating if uh, if you feel like you're swimming uphill clearly the body position and uh, uh, different and I think this sort of cues I um, mean this is just like an example um, uh, kids can practice also even when the swim breaststroke kind of hold the breath longer all, all, almost all the way up to the point at which they begin to breathe then immediately dump air and feeling that will enhance buoyancy this sort of things that but i think it, uh, every i believe that every improvisation is done best when you prepare and so you can kind of before the practice go kind of go in and have maybe one two three points i wouldn't work on on uh, like a dissertation and have like 16 points and going over just some simple one two three most important ones and maybe sometimes you won't be able to go past the first one and that's okay. And sometimes you'll probably blow by uh, three and feel that that's great. It's going to be different day to day. But I think uh, it, like knowing what you're really looking for, right? And then trying to feel it and then being, being in the first post-it, right? What, what happened in the moment, second post-it and what, you want to happen uh, so you kind of kind of go through one two three one two three one two three and i think you'll 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 be able to feel uh again it, it's never uh, as effective as when you see the yourself in the video but i think if you're paying attention if you're really deliberately paying attention you'll get a pretty good picture and typically my impression and my experience will working with with this sort of stuff athletes especially that are are pretty aware they always feel that they're not doing good enough and then they see in the in the video like they say well this is pretty pretty good this looks like work class and i'll say well that this is work class <laughs> you know? but uh it's it's pretty interesting and oftentimes that athlete feels hey my stroke is fantastic and they're looking, well, let's come again, let's look at the video. And they look at it and thinking, man, that's a, it's a wreck. Yeah, <laughs> well, awareness, uh, then that's, and that's a difference. So I think, um, uh, I think that will help. And some, sometimes just really kind of slowing down mentally uh, and, and paying attention, just maybe deliberately, just one or two areas until, until you're, you really feel it. Take, take that noise out of your head and, and get, get, kind of get the feel, even though I know it's difficult on open water because of so many different factors that we're not used to. But I think kind of rela relaxing mentally and focusing on like these three blocks and, um, and kind, of go, kind of going over it, it 
it's uh, it's actually quite fun. You know, this is kind of in a way kind of how I try to practice when I practice myself. I think it time really flies quickly. Um, I think those sort of uh, tips and uh, and I think I mean again I would prepare maybe one or two or three uh, points before kind of get in the water. So when uh, you, you already kind of have a plan. I think I, I think having a plan helps. Yeah. Helps helps kind of have a nice good kind of structure to it. Does it, does anyone have any questions? I know you guys are always super shy and Nate has his camera off and he's usually the question asker, but, um, you know, do you have any, any questions? Like, you know, I'll be sending out some stuff, um, that is, is doable where most of you guys are swimming, which is kind of all over, but, um, is there anything that you have or I don't know, any questions you might have? Yeah, just yeah. If, if if there's anybody again, you know, you know, pass it on. Like I know, last time we're if we kind of talked about and, and things, and sometimes questions are uh, maybe would come later with, with the practice, and and sometimes feel we feel that things are really clear, and and then you get in in the pool thinking, well, oh, I don't think I get it, and so th and then the question. And some, some, sometimes feels like it's not quite really clear, but then you get in the pool and say, ah, I know exactly what, what he's talking about. This is, uh, but I think uh, things by doing, kind of practice and doing, you, you really can go wrong. Um, really can go wrong. But, but start simple and um, comfortable and then just maybe get some, pro some progression with, uh, with complexity and intensity and also kind of reset expectations. I think what's, what's in the beginning may seem like, like a challenge. I think after two or three sessions, it will be just a kind of matter of fact, like real, real, real pedestrian uh, stuff. Pedestrian any, stuff. Okay, go ahead, Katie. Okay, thanks. Are there any techniques that you think will be easier to practice open water versus like in a pool? Like oh, that, we should focus on. Uh, if you could kind of re re restate the question, okay. But any techniques? Any, say, any uh, techniques like um, that are easier to practice, like in open water, mm -hmm. like then like in a pool, or like we'll get more out of it rather than. Well, um, we'll definitely think about uh, kind of shortening the pieces because uh, because you don't really see where you're going in open water, right? And then you don't want to have this kind of sighting technique developing in, in your freestyle. So you kind of see the distance so you know it's safe and you kind of limit to um, number of strokes at which you, you, you don't have to develop any, any goofy uh, movements that you typically will never use. I think I, I would shorten the pieces and, and the rest of it, you can do all kinds of things, basically the same, all kinds of drills. Uh, the only thing you'll, you'll be doing a lot more uh, switching and because you kind of be going you know, in, a, in a different direction, right? And, and then it kind of in, in a confined area, but you, could, you we can really reuse the skills. The key of course is, uh, you, you, know, you know, make sure that it's, uh, it's um, it's safe, you know. And again, uh, the, uh, the the buoyancy. The question was, uh, how do you counteract uh, uh, the really excessive buoyancy with 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 laziness, like with with the lazy kick body, body position? You know, you can the the suit can make you feel so buoyant, so you can kind of relax and rely on it. And that's why I think engagement comes. Uh, to that where where you're really paying attention into enhancing your engagement rather than decreasing your engagement because the pieces are short and on the contrast say eight strokes of free or eight strokes of butterfly right and you're trying to stay as engaged as possible every stroke rather than relying and kind of kind of getting uh you know a complacent and uh I, yeah, hope it makes sense. So you're you're really deliberately 
elevated engagement you don't even mind the suit because after a while you're not going to really feel feel the difference so and, and i think that's what that's what i would i would look rather than look at the suit as a device right uh look at it uh, look at the back and the body look how how your muscles engage how your tone if, if your tone is is good and high if your movement is uh, really re really driving i think that's that's a ticket and katie all kinds of skills really all, all you, you, everything you know you, you can do just shorter shorter and when you rest kind of flip on your back and you can do some sculling on your back can kind of get the air also see where you your, your orientation in uh, you know in the open water that you don't run into anything and or or, or anyone and then kind of go back um, another uh, good exercise that I actually have done in the pool just you know for 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 variety and uh, and for really kind of a high intensity training we've done like like three cycle AMs basically it goes uh, like three cycles fly turn the uh, breakout, six strokes, backstroke, turn, pull out, like three strokes from the breaststroke, turn, pull out, and free. And everything's done like with the with the really with the top end speed and top end engagement. And then you like, rest about like, 30 seconds and, and go back at it. Why I, li I limit to three cycles? Because I would take the, the lane line and divide it. So three swimmers could do it in the same lane at the same time, right? But in open water, you can really go more. You can go five. You can go six. You can go eight because it's it's your it's your environment, and you and you'll feel that that's a that's really excellent, excellent training and uh, develop it develops a lot of athleticism and turns are fast and dynamic and 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 you you'll miss the wall though that that's for sure. But uh, but that 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 kind of idea. Uh, yeah, and again, they really be, be as creative as you can be, and uh, and use a lot of athletic movements in in the pool. Uh, no, no wall, no problem. But you you know the skill, you still can do the skill. That's uh, I think that's an idea. Gabby, did you have a question? Yeah. So the only thing I can't really do when I'm in open waters is underwater is underwater yeah. kicks. I mean, you can. It's kind of scary, but I sure. wonder. So is there right, and and, and and what you can what you can do just instead of instead of, like instead of going underwater, you you can really limit to like like three body dolphins, uh, like three harmonic movements, and and go even close to the surface. You know, the the movement is is the movement, right? And um, it, so as long as it's ex executed pro it's properly well with, with engagement, you can always adjust the depth, right? That's an easy thing. And, uh, and, I, and I think, again, being creative, you can do it on the side. You can do it uh, at, the, at the, the 90 degrees, at 45 degrees. The movement is the movement. Uh, I think just being creative, I think that, that that's an idea. Not to look at it as... Oh, I can do the. I cannot do this instead. Well, I cannot do this, but I can do the, that. And that's in essence, you'll you'll see that it's an opportunity to learn. It's going to be challenging, more challenging, in fact. But uh, I think the benefit is is really excellent. All right, thank you. Oh, sure, my pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you, Gabby. Any any other questions? I, I mean, if you don't think of them now and you swim, you go swim, like he was saying, and you have other questions, and of course, always here to answer them. Um, Absolutely, yeah. But, uh, you know, I think, and I know some of you haven't gone out yet, but are are pondering it. And so this was a, a let me see what it's like sort of conversation. Um, you know, but it's definitely, it, it's definitely getting, um warmer and so it's a little bit more appealing I think to those um that haven't really been that excited about it um but I think almost everyone on this on this call has has at least gone once or twice not everyone but almost um 
yeah, I don't, uh, I don't have any other, I don't have any other questions or thoughts. Alex, anything else? Well, well, well you know, there's always something to, you know, to, you know, to think about it. But again, I would, uh, I would, I would also in, in, encourage kids if, if it's, if it's possible to do it, you know, do it. Um, I think uh, being being connected to the water, it's it's a wonderful thing, and and and, and take and take advantage of uh, kind of over freedom to create your own structure. I think sometimes you create your kind of your own plan, your own practice plan, and you're you're you become even a little bit more invested in it, and and uh, and you kind of like it more too. So I think I think, uh, but definitely by doing it, uh, having sort of. Um, uh, not necessarily have a uh, inc incredibly high expectations of, of, of results at the end, but really look at the process and, uh, and, and, and enjoy the learning and, and knowing that whatever um, you do now for yourself, you're kind of investing in, 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 in the nearest future. And, uh, and that, that investment will, will surprise you. I really believe so. Some, sometimes you just don't know when, but it always tend to show up at the, the most unexpected moment and, and like, wow, that's, that's good. You know, I think uh, that's an idea. Yeah. Just, just an idea. And I think safety definitely is important. I, it, like Gabby said, I, I'm me too, for some reason, I'm just not really comfortable doing dolphin kicks underwater when I don't really see anything. That's just uh, like in a dark room chasing a black cat. Yeah. wearing Ray-Ban sunglasses, you know, <laughs> that just uh, dark in the dark in the dark. Yeah, I think that there's, I, I think it's a generally good rule of thumb not to go under when the visibility is minimal. Right. Um, not only for your own, you know, you don't want to run into anything, but also, <laughs> you know, even though most of you are swimming with buoys, um, generally your parents like to know where you're at. And if you dive under, it's not like the crystal clear no one right. is swimming anywhere that I know of that's crystal clear. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but one more thing is that I'll say is that if you if you went or your first time is somewhat of a negative experience, I think that's somewhat normal. Um, you know, it's it's a a different environment than the pool, and there's a lot of different factors that can make any ex, any one swim. I mean, that's the kind of the beauty of open water swimming is every day is very different. Um, whereas like your pool experience is pretty similar. You might feel tired or your practice might be a little slow, but it's mostly the same. Um, you know, the open water environment is very different. So many factors can factor in. Um, you know, I've gone twice now and the first, and I'm fairly experienced open water swimmer. Um, first time I went this year, miserable, hated, hated, like from the get go. I, I was just terrible. I got like seasick, all sorts of weird things that never happened. Um, I went today, it's totally fine. So, you know, I think if you had one, if you went and the first time you were like, uh, I'm not into this, um, that is a crazy captain, Owen. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not into this, you know, like give yourself a, a few, give yourself a minute and then like give yourself another opportunity because, you know, there isn't any pressure of performance in, in the open water swims. Like no one right now is currently training to become the 10k national champion tomorrow right. um you know so i think it's it's more like alex and i have talked about because one time i posed this hypothetical question like why can't we um why can't we just get all our cardio outside of the water and then like do a few sprints um it was sort of just this you know discussion and yeah, I believe your answer was more like, you know, we're this, swimming is like such an environmental sport, like being in the water matters so much. Um, you know, and how you move in the water is so different than being in the land. And so, you know, opportunities to be in the water really do matter. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. So last call for questions. Everyone feels satisfied. Um, I'll pass on the stuff that Alex sent on um, and then some of the other stuff that I have. Um, and, um, you know, we will probably get to the point where we're doing some organized stuff. Um, there's some insurance logistics that kick in different times, which I spent last week on the phone with risk management dealing with. So um, we will probably get to that, but we're not quite 
we're not quite there, but, um, but yeah, I think that'll be, that'll be a, a nice change too. Yeah. Emily, what, what, uh, when Washington County is, is a, re a reopening, is it, uh, is it like mid June or, or I don't, I don't know because I, I know that Lincoln,